So today we are covering part two of YouTube. Last week we spent some time creating a video and uh, we used Windows Movie Maker uh, to put together the video. Now it was brought to my attention that apparently if you've got Windows 10, uh, Windows 10 no longer supports Movie Maker. So uh, that free software that we talked about last time, I guess for Windows 10, they don't have it anymore. I don't know if there's an alternative. I'd have to look up at the Microsoft website to see if they've got an alternative to Movie Maker. But rest in peace, Movie Maker. It was around, I don't know, 15 years, 17 years, and then now it's not available for Windows 10 anymore. Well, I did mention an alternative. If you wanted to upgrade from iMovie or Movie Maker, there was an alternative that you could go up one level. Anyone remember what I mentioned as an alternative? Well, Adobe Premiere is the highest level of all, the most expensive one. In the middle, we had Adobe Premiere Elements. So Premiere Elements is like a middle of the road or middle level video editing software. Uh, iMovie and Movie Maker are at the bottom. Not that they're bad, but that they're easier to use, they're affordable and so forth. In the middle was uh, Premiere Elements and then on the highest level is Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro and all that big expensive complicated stuff <laughs> so there might be alternatives or most likely are alternatives uh, perhaps that are free uh, but that just came to my attention question uh, so, uh, because I was going to do the, uh, whatever it was, what we did last week we made it? yes uh, so I just Yeah, we did uh, talk about uh, briefly about move, uh, iMovie last time. The catch is that if you're using iMovie, uh, I believe it only runs on iPhones and only on Macs. So for those that don't have a Mac or iPhone, then they, they can't really... They can't really I think there's a very basic version of Premiere for phones, I think. But the problem with working with any mobile app for video, in my opinion, is that even if it gives you a variety of features, it's very fatiguing and annoying to try to work on such a small screen for a long period of time. I think if you're going to cut out mistakes and add text and such, maybe it's doable on a smaller screen. But I personally really prefer a big screen of a laptop or desktop computer where I see my icons and my menus and my windows a lot easier. So there probably is a light version of Premiere for phones, just like I know there's a light version of Photoshop. Photoshop is big, famous, professional software that everyone uses, and there's a light version of it for the phones. But for most people, even on a tablet, uh, if you've got like a 7-inch or a 10-inch tablet, okay, it's great, I've got it mobile, but you know, you're, you've got the touch interface, which isn't always the most accurate, and really I prefer a keyboard, mouse, and a, and a screen for that kind of heavy work. Mm -hmm. For today, since we do have uh, some video that we can work with, well, now it's time to get into into YouTube itself. It's time to actually uh, create the account and use it and we'll see uh, how does YouTube differ and how is it the same compared to other social networks. We're gonna see a lot of similarity between YouTube and the other networks we've talked about and new things of course. So I'll make some some notes. I'll put the notes in the folder a little bit later and then we'll get we'll get hands-on in a moment. So YouTube yet another social network YouTube uh, you create a channel so they have the terminology here of channel 
as opposed to other networks, would have, which would have been a profile or a page. So you create a channel on YouTube, and you get to get subscribers, which the terminology of the other networks would be followers. So different terminology, same idea. You get, uh, you create a channel to get subscribers and thumbs up on your videos. On the other networks, it's likes or faves or hearts or whatever the other network calls it on your videos. Well, I'm gonna say on, yeah on your videos and the other networks content. So on Facebook, I've got a page, and I get likes on my content. On Twitter, I have a profile, and I get followers on my content, on my tweets. Different terminology for the same idea. You have a channel, you get subscribers, thumbs up, and videos. So differentiators, of course. Differentiators. Assume that's how you spell it since I don't have spell check. Differentiators are focus on video and also positive or negative reactions. So, reactions, generic word for the likes or the, or the faves or the blorts, or whatever the network calls it. Whatever the network calls it, it's a reaction. I got a like, I got a respond, I got a retweet, I got something, that's a reaction. Well, almost every network focuses on positive reactions. Thumbs up, a like, hearts, whatever. Uh, YouTube, for a long time, was the only network that had a negative reaction, which is the thumbs down. You can give a video a thumbs up because you liked it, or you give a video a thumbs down because you didn't like it. In the beginning on YouTube, people could actually give star ratings between one and five. So if I really liked the video, I'd give it five stars. If I didn't like the video, I'd give it one stars. And if the video was all right, maybe I'd give it three stars, or two, or four, or something. Well, for several years in the beginning, YouTube had that, that setup. Uh, people could give you stars from one to five, you know, like, uh, like you know, a movie critic giving stars to a movie. But a few years ago, YouTube decided, well, according to our data, people really actually uh, love the video or hate the video. So five or one star is very, very common, which I don't believe. I think people do give a lot of in the middle uh, ratings. So anyway, YouTube said, okay, uh, well, because we really only see the extremes, positive or negative, we're going to make a new thing. Thumbs up, thumbs down. So now our videos can either have a thumbs up that people like it or a thumbs down that people don't. And we'll see uh, the value of those reactions when we create the account. Uh, so that's its big differentiator, although now um, Facebook has also reactions. They had a thumbs up. They had that like button for a long time, didn't they? And in the last two years or less, they've added more reactions. They've added... Um, what is it like a like a frowny face kind of or an angry face and uh, the heart and a like and a thumbs up so there's different kinds of reactions now on Facebook too it's mostly still positive but um, another thing that sets a YouTube account from the others is a focus on video which now that isn't a big differentiator anymore either you can do video on Facebook on Twitter snapchat Instagram so this is what I've said before, that all of these networks are homogenizing. They're becoming the same. They've all got some sort of positive reaction, maybe a negative reaction. They can all do video now. They're all starting to do live video. They have stories or you know groups or organizational bundles. They're all becoming so similar. But still, now it's all about the momentum. If I can do video on Facebook, and I can do video on Twitter, and I can do video everywhere, I still want to be on YouTube because it has the sheer numbers and momentum and fame. When people think about online video, really, number one, they think about YouTube. Even though Facebook has more visitors and more users, YouTube video is still the realm of YouTube. So it would behoove us to have a foothold in YouTube. So from one 
personal account. We can create multiple business profiles or pages. Well, that sounds very similar to Facebook. We needed to create an account in Facebook as a person, and then we create business pages, as many as we want or need. Um, similar also on Google+. We created a, a long time ago, uh, two months ago, we created an account on Google+, and then we created a business page, and we can create as many business pages on Google+, as we want. And uh, we'll see that also on YouTube. And if you were here two months ago when we created the Google Plus account, we can use the same Google Plus account to then create the YouTube account. It's all tied together to the one Gmail account. If you weren't here last time, we'll take a moment to we will take a moment to create it. So one Gmail account to control it all, which would be Google Plus, YouTube the other services, Google Maps, etc. Any questions so far? I've got a handout for you that I mentioned last time. This has some examples of video types. We created a video last time, so let's see what kind of the one we created last time, let's see how it fits into my handout. But this is going to be some ideas. It's not every kind of YouTube video, but it's going to be some ideas of YouTube videos that you can create and some other tips. So if we go to the network folder, remember we can double click computer, top left corner. We want to open computer window, and then inside of the classroom data drive Z. Then on the first folder at the top, Classroom Data 2017, double click that one. And then if you scroll down, you'll find Campos Social 2, open that folder. So Campos Fall 2017 Social 2. You need to drag a copy so copy it from my folder to your desktop you need a copy of campus social media YouTube ideas and if you don't have a video you'll also need a copy of Tech Review Tuesday mp4 so both of these drag them to your desktop or flash drive if you have it so you need social media YouTube ideas and Tech Review Tuesday if you've got your own video, we can use your video to upload to YouTube. As I said last time, if you recorded your own video on your own phone and such, you need your cable. I don't have a cable for you, so you'll need to get your own cable. But I've got a video for you instead if you didn't come with a video. That's what we spent time doing last time. So did everyone get a copy of those two items? You need the... You need that PDF, social media YouTube ideas, and you need the video. Everyone have those? Let's look at that handout. You'll be able to print it a little bit later, since the printer is noisy. But let's look at Campo's social media YouTube ideas. If you get any pop-ups when you're opening the PDF, just cancel them. Okay, social media for your business, YouTube ideas, social profile, YouTube. YouTube is the granddaddy of all video sharing sites. Founded in 2005, YouTube has gone on to host countless videos and create many viral sensations. In the very first video, here's some trivia for you to impress people. The very first YouTube video featured a video at, shot at the San Diego Zoo. And that's a couple of kids looking at the elephants and marveling at how amazing they are. And it's like 15 seconds. And that was the first uh, 
uh, YouTube video, and it's still on YouTube. You can go back and watch it. Surprisingly, though, it does not have the most views of all YouTube videos. Just because it's the first one doesn't mean that it has all the views. Uh, I think the one that has the most views of all time still is that Gangnam Style. Remember that one? The guy dancing? Uh, Sai, I think his name's the Korean guy. Uh, Gangnam Style, it reached 2 billion views the very first time in 20... No, 1 billion views in 2012. And by now, I believe it has 2 billion views. And then other people like Taylor Swift and stuff, they've also got videos with like a billion views. So this uh, uh, San Diego Zoo one, it's the first one, but it doesn't have the most views. It's got a few million. And then when you talk about big, big YouTube videos, only a couple of million, that's not so big. But for us, of course, I want a million views on my videos. And we'll see why a little later. YouTube is a great social network to tap into because more and more people are getting their info and entertainment from videos. So visual content studies show that more people uh, are preferring some sort of video content than reading something or listening to something. They want to watch something. So if we have some experience in video creation, if we have some ideas of video creation, we can create the content that people are looking for. And YouTube is this social network with uh, about 1 billion users. And uh, we can find our audience there and our, for our particular brand or product. Think about it in the most basic terms as a place to put your commercials for your business. Where you might have put commercials on TV, uh, here's a sort of a place to put commercials. But we'll see that it is also more than that because I say here, more and more people get their information here because um, this is where they get their information and entertainment. So information, how to do something. We'll see that in a moment. Types of videos. These that follow here are not the only types of videos. There are six of them here, six possible ideas of types of videos to create, but there's plenty of other ones as well. Uh, one of these, at least one of these types, should work with your company and probably more than one. It's important to create content on a regular basis. You never know which of your videos will become the next viral hit. And I can talk about this with personal experience because as I've said, I teach this but I also work with clients and with clients we make them videos. And what I mean here is you never know what's going to be the hit. You never know uh, that this is the video we spent so much effort on and no one cares, no one watches it. Then instead, something is uploaded a little less polished, and that's the one that's the hit. You never know. I showed the example last week of this uh, instructional video that my company did, and that one ended up, it's got like 150,000 views. People really responded to that one, uh, how to make an app. We did then a follow-up one, and now that one is getting more hits than the original one. So if you create different kinds of videos, you don't know, maybe your how-to videos are the ones that are gonna take off, or maybe your review videos are the ones that will take off. You have to figure out how these apply to your business, and we'll talk about how, examples, but um, you want to try different tactics. I'll look at these in just a moment. But I've got two links here. Uh, have you heard of Vimeo.com? Yeah. So besides YouTube, Vimeo would be the second most famous video site. And uh, a lot of people haven't really heard of it, but because YouTube is such, such a juggernaut, people have heard of and use YouTube much more. But Vimeo is an alternative video sharing site. It has its audience and its niche. And what I like about Vimeo is that they've got their video school uh, portal where you can go and get free tutorials and advice on picking a camera and setting up a microphone and recording a good video and editing it. YouTube has something like that too. And you can find it if you go into YouTube Help. But I also wanted to show uh, Vimeo because they've got a great video school. For free and I've got a book on Amazon here that I mentioned uh, ultimate guide to building a channel uh, I haven't checked the price recently but it's probably less than $20 if I recommend any books I try to recommend inexpensive books 
So if you want to learn even more about YouTube and really uh, any video sharing sites uh, that, that uh, link to that book might be helpful. Before I look at these examples, one more thing here. The Next Frontier, live streaming. YouTube started off as a place to upload completed videos, those that have already been edited. There is now a whole generation of live streaming sites where you share video as it happens. I started to mention this previously. I'll mention it again. Two types of videos nowadays. Pre-made video. Down there I call it completed video and also live video. So video pre-made is a video that's been shot, edited, uploaded. We, I had shot the video a few weeks ago. We edited it last week. Today we'll upload it. So we go to the channel, we go to the account, and we upload a video that's ready. Live video is in the opposite. Turn on your camera app. Show the world live. You, you turn on the web camera on your laptop. You turn on the camera on your app on your device. You, you go live. You show what you're doing, uh, warts and all. You make a mistake, you fall down, you drop the camera. All of that is going to be live. And you cannot go back and edit it. Um, it gets uploaded as is. That's part of the charm. That's part of the interest. People maybe want to see something uh, real and live instead of a perfectly created video. That's a whole other discussion for later. That's why in part three we're going to cover Periscope, which is the live video sharing site. I have listed here Periscope, Twitch, and Facebook. So Periscope was one of the first ones. Uh, there was a uh, uh, Meerkat and Periscope, they were both like coming out at the same time, this brand new thing, uh, record or broadcast live video, they were fighting neck and neck, and then Twitter bought Periscope, so Meerkat was, was dead, because they didn't have the big, um, you know, venture capital or whatever, so Periscope is now a subsidiary of, of Twitter uh, for live video. There's been other ones out there too, twitch.tv, justin.tv, livestream.tv. Those actually started before Periscope and such, and they were based on recording yourself playing video games or doing something on your screen. And then Facebook, well, since it's the biggest no social network and it wants to con continue that way, it borrows the ideas of other networks. And so one thing that they borrowed was live. We want to do live video too. So you're able to do that with those networks. Yes? Would um, um, YouTube TV fit in that category? Yes. Okay. Well, um, YouTube Live oh, okay. would. Uh, I have to double check. I'm pretty sure YouTube TV is not exactly the live version. It's more streaming, like for, um, like for sports and, yeah. and movies. And exactly. Stuff. So YouTube TV would be the live version. Exactly. So YouTube TV is like their, their own you know, their own channel on Cox Cable or whatever. But YouTube Live then is this, one of these live streaming uh, portals. Some quick ideas here, and we'll go into more detail if you come to back to part three on Periscope. Well, how would you use the live streaming? If you don't have the control of being able to really control your video, you can have behind the scenes videos, special events, prize giveaways, Q and A's, you know, talk to your uh, followers live, and in part three we'll go into that detail. But this is um, a lot that we can do with video. We've spent several weeks talking about these networks, and now here the shift is uh, for for video. And even in video, there's pre-made video, and there's live video. So if we're still working with pre-made video, here's some examples. These six different kinds of videos are ideas that I have here for you to think about to create for your channel. 
So I'll show these examples, talk about them a little bit, and then show how they could work for many kinds of businesses. So let me show this first one here. This is in an unboxing video. It sounds perhaps exactly what you think it is, unboxing. Hey there guys, Zach here from Invasa, and welcome back to another video. Now today we're unboxing and taking our first look at the white Microsoft Lumia 650 from... Let me skip ahead just a little bit. So, diving straight into the unboxing, this is the Lumia 650 box, pretty standard for a Lumia device, especially for a low-end Lumia device. We've got the device on the front of the box, nothing on the side, nothing on the top, well there's a few icons about what app to measure, so not much on the box, a pretty standard Lumia box if I do say so myself. Then pulling the device out, you can see the white Lumia 650. This is a video, yes, of literally opening a box <laughs> of a product. These are very popular, believe it or not, uh, depending on the, on the goals and such. But yes, this is a video that is now going to go for the next six minutes or so of opening a box. Now, how long does it take to open a box? Well, it's not just about opening the box. Do you notice he's also talking about it and saying it comes with this, and it has this sort of European-style plug, and it has this and that, and he's talking about the specs, <coughs> the specifications, and everything. So yes, you might say, well, it's just, a, it's just a, a video of opening up a box, but he's also giving a review. He's also talking about the product and what you expect to get out of it. So there are unboxing videos of a variety of types of products. Um, let's see another example. This one was of a phone. If, I, if I'm up here on YouTube, I can start searching unboxing. Let's see what we have here. Unboxing Nintendo Switch. Unboxing camera. Unboxing clothes. Unboxing Christmas presents. Uh, unboxing collector's edition. Let's see what that's about. So people are opening things up toys, games. Okay, what about this? Unboxing air conditioner. So these are lots and lots of videos of people opening up air conditioners. Uh, 144,000 results. Okay, and you, you think, well, who, who, who cares about any of this? Most of these, or all of these videos really should have then, okay, some stats. 3.9 million views of opening up this air conditioner. 24,000 views for this one. 24,000 there. 3,000 on that one. 15,000. 504,000. People really care. You might not think, who would utterly care about unboxing the LG inverter air conditioner? 1.5. Well, again, the purpose is someone wants to perhaps think of buying this particular air conditioner. What's included in the box? Do I have a 120 volt plug or do I need a 220 volt plug after I bought it and I realize I have the wrong one? So this is sort of like previewing a product for people. People are interested in here. Is it worth buying this USB portable air conditioner? It doesn't say the, the literal words unboxing in the title, but it's related to that. This is someone opening up a little USB-powered air conditioner, and so forth, and someone with a really messy room back there, and um, just a variety of types of styles and quality and professionalism and whatnot. This one, only 65 views, 300 views, 11,000 views. So an unboxing video is opening up a package of something. How does this work for yourself? Let's say I have the example. So types of videos with examples. Let's say I have uh, Victor's Bakery, this fictional business that I've been talking about. The ultimate goal of Victor's Bakery is to sell cupcakes and birthday cakes and all that great stuff. Well, I'm going to create a YouTube channel. Here's a possible examples of how to create unboxing videos. I show the packaging 
of the products I ship to you. I set, let's say I sell my cupcakes on Main Street, but I also ship them throughout the US. So I want to differentiate myself from the other online bakeries, maybe by my packaging. I want to show you buy one of my cupcakes or birthday cakes and it comes in this amazing package. You're gonna get a little treat, a little surprise treat inside. So I'm talking about this and I'm recording myself and I'm showing the person, uh, the people, the audience, my box and I'm showing them how it's all packaged up and that it's nice and safe and that the cupcake won't get smushed in the mail and that you have a surprise inside and all of that. So I'm creating that type of video to uh, again build uh, mind share. I'm trying to uh, get on people's minds about who is this business, what do they do, what's unique about them. On the opposite side on the other side of the coin, uh, get customers to unbox for you. If I offer people a reward online, they will often do something for me. And this reward can be as simple as fleeting online fame, meaning I give them a shout out online. I, I mention them, I retweet them, I, I give them some sort of internet fame that people are craving nowadays. Uh, so I put out on Twitter or YouTube or whatever saying, hey everyone, if you buy one of our cupcakes and show it off unboxing, show it off when you buy it, uh, we'll give you 10% off your next purchase. Okay, that's kind of a too high of a reward. Simply saying, Show off, show off our product on your YouTube channel and we'll give you a shout out. Even something like that people want and like because that can help someone go viral. You never know that you help someone's video go viral or they help your video go viral. So it's sort of a symbiosis sort of thing. Get customers to unbox for you by offering them something like a shout out, a, a reshare, <clears throat> any internet fame any internet fame action uh, even commenting on their own videos or just some sort of way to help promote them in some way that does it, that it that doesn't let you, that doesn't make you go out of your way so get the customers free advertising they may have a terrible camera, terrible audio, but it's free advertising. <coughs> maybe that person, maybe we have, you know, 12 subscribers, but that person for some reason has uh, 100 subscribers. And they did an unboxing of our product, and now our product has been viewed by 100 more people. And that could then give us results, sales and such. So, unboxing video. That doesn't work for everyone, of course. Let's say I'm a realtor. Uh, that one might be a little bit harder to do an unboxing video of. You're not actually opening up any products off the top of my head. So maybe for realty, realtor business, unboxing won't be the best. But here's some other types. Screen capture tutorial. OK, so let's take a quick look at that one. Now notice there's often an advertisement before a video. I'll explain what that is in a little bit, but then you can skip. The result might be, hello, this is Victor Campos for PMP Interactive. Let's build an Android app in Visual Studio in five minutes. Well, first we need to go online and download Visual Studio 2015. So this is a video that I did, and this is in that style of a screen capture tutorial. It's recording what I'm doing on screen, I'm explaining what I'm doing, what I'm clicking on, and the goal of this video is build an Android app with Visual Studio 2015 in five minutes. So it's the whole process of setting up the software and creating an app. Not an amazing app, you can't do that in five minutes, but this is how to set yourself up in five minutes or so to use the software. Um, this one has been a hit. This is the one that I said. This one's got 138,000 views. So, and then a lot of activity with comments and such, 104 comments. 
So the goal of this, in, in our company, PMD Interactive, we, we do many of this um, web stuff and app stuff. We, we make websites for clients, we can make apps for clients, etc. So here, I'm giving out something for free to get views and attention for then the paid version. I want my company to get hired to make apps. So here, if I'm giving away a little free video, how to make your own apps in five minutes. People can try to do it themselves, and then eventually they realize, well, it's a little more complex. Let me reach out to them. They seem to know what they're doing. Uh, let's hire them. So this kind of video, screen capture. Show something on the computer step by step. So teach them something, train them on something to get something back. Question? Yeah, uh, besides your own uh, advertising that you get on that for your own company, do, I mean, you get up for like over 100000 do you get uh, other companies that want to advertise that also? We haven't done it ourselves, but that gets into, well, we'll talk about it a little later, how to make money on YouTube. Uh, every other network we spend money on it but on YouTube we can make money so what you're saying there about then advertisers and, and and all of that yes short answer when you get to a certain number of views that's when you can start to sell advertising for uh, for your videos to make a little profit off of it just like in a commercial or on a channel in real life on TV so we'll come back to this one a little bit advertising So you show something uh, on your computer step by step. So train or teach um, in action. Need screen recorder software. And the one I recommend is called Open Broadcaster Software. I'll put the web address in a moment. But that's what I use to record these lectures of these classes, OBS, Open Broadcaster. It's a free uh, screen recording software. It's for Windows and Mac. In these classes, I use it to record everything that I'm looking at on the screen and my mouse movement. And I have a web camera plugged in right here, and it's recording my voice. So in these classes, I record everything that I'm doing. The one uh, I just showed there for our company it's the same sort of thing. I've got some sort of microphone. I've got the OBS software. It's recording what I'm doing. I, of course, ed I, can, I can still, of course, edit it after the fact, and I had to do it. The original video took more than five minutes to, to originally record. I had to go back in and erase my mistake where I clicked the wrong link or where something took a while. There's a spot there that says, OK, now wait for it to install. It took like five minutes to install, just me waiting for it to install. Of course I cut that part out. I don't want people to sit for five minutes just watching it install. So you can record the video and then further edit the video to really focus it. Yes? When you do the uh, YouTube videos, you say you use uh, OBS software. Like, do you have capture software? Yes. Uh, for any YouTube video, or specifically this one about screen capture? Oh, no, no, just your recommendation. Is it still recommended to use a separate audio? Yes, most of the time for any kind of video, I would recommend a separate audio feed because uh, like those little lapel mics that I'm talking about to put it on your shirt, uh, those are often going to give you better results because the microphone is right near the voice source. So if I've got a really nice camera, but I'm standing here and I'm recording you there, your voice is not going to record well at all, even if you shout, because there's so much echo and all of that. So almost always, you do want to use some sort of separate audio recorder. 
and here's a here's an interesting way to do it as well let's say I have uh, my my phone and I'm and I do want to record everyone here but I want to capture your voice if I have someone else's cell phone I can record I can put this cell phone near you and set it there recording and then I have this one over here recording the visuals so one is recording the audio one is recording the visuals and then in movie maker I can combine them for the one that was close to you which was focused on the audio plus the one that was far that had the video combine it into one so OBS software it's for Windows and Mac and Linux it can let you record everything you're doing on the screen various audio sources and video sources to get really advanced you can uh, you can set it up like this let me show it briefly here here it is recording right now it's recording my screen it's like a mirror inside a mirror but what I can do is I can add another source. Right now I'm only recording the display, my monitor. And there's my voice right there being recorded. I can add another source here. I can turn on the video of the camera itself. And I can appear in the corner of my recordings. So I can have my, my face here while I'm showing the screen, while it's recording my, my voice. So the screen capture software, uh, training people to do something. These would work great for tech companies. Let's say I'm a web designer. I want to get hired uh, to make websites for people. I could give away some free two minute or 10 minute video teaching something. And some people will try to do it themselves and they'll do it themselves and they're done. But some people will try it themselves and say, I need a professional. And if they saw your video, and they saw that you were a professional in it, that could get you uh, a lead. And hopefully that lead becomes a conversion, a sale. So give something for free. A free or short version of your product to entice people to follow up with you. That video on making the app, uh, a lot of people are asking, oh, mine's not working here, and here's my problem. And uh, a few then say, well, I'm really, interested in I'm really interested in making this type of app. Can you help? So, you know, out of 134,000, I think there's been two uh, actual clients from it. That's you know super high amount of views compared to two sales. But that's so common, like I've said before. It's so easy for people to like and to subscribe and to follow and to comment. Suddenly it's so hard to click buy. So don't be discouraged that uh, you only get one result even though my video has a thousand views and I only made one sale. Well still, you made one tangible sale out of one video. That happens also in real life. They run those commercials for everything all day long. You know, that auto, those car commercials. Here comes another holiday, commercials on TV all about car sales. Uh, 10,000 people see it, and they, and they sell seven cars. Well, if, if the cost of the commercial was less than the cost of the car, that was a, that was a win. Same thing here. If the cost in your time and effort and all of that, is, as you define it, is less than um, what you made as the sale, then that's a win. Okay, how to. Some of these sort of bleed together. A how to is very close to a screen capture, which could be close to a review, and a review is similar to a list. We'll see these examples. So, so how to do something. Let me show that example. Stone. And Hi, I'm Celeste with Amy Stone, and today we're going to be talking about how to plant tomatoes. First, you want to plan the location for your vegetables. Make sure this spot gets at least six hours of sunlight. There's several different ways. So here's a four minute long video on how to plant tomatoes. This one I like to show because it's one of my favorite ones that they really did it right. This looks very professional very visually interesting it's to the point it's short 
if I play this or any of these videos without voice, I can I can break it down. So for example, there are shots of the presenter from a certain distance, you know, from chest level up. So that's a kind of a shot there, an establishing shot. There are then shots of her close up, you know, right here. There are shots when the camera is closer to her. This is to do a little bit of um, visual interest. If instead the video is constantly at one place, okay, see right here, it changes a little closer to her. The, it looks like at a certain point here the camera is on a tripod. It's nice and steady. Here it looks like someone's holding it. It's a little shaky. That's not a mistake. That's not bad. It's a style. Steady right here, close up, a little shaky. She, they could have also put it on a tripod here for no shake. It's, a, it's an aesthetic choice. So far away shot, close shot. There were also shots over here eventually. Over here of actually getting to work. Okay, a different shot. Hand held again and close to the dirt, far away. Uh, just different shots for visual interest. If the camera was set up on a tripod and everything happened from far away, then it looks like a stage play. But here we have the ability to zoom in and all of that. And notice there's things in focus, things out of focus. And that again is more of this aesthetic. There are parts where text appeared on screen. She's mentioning these things, rows, containers, raised beds, etc. Putting text on the screen. Over here, these, these are a photo. That was a photo of a bit, and that's a photo of tomatoes. Those are not videos, those are still shots of photos, and then the camera moves. You can do that in, in Movie Maker and such. And uh, overall, good lighting and good sound. Her voice is recorded well the whole time. Tomato with the tomato cage. When it comes to tomato cages, size does matter. Most people like to buy these small tomato cages. Background music throughout the whole thing. So these, this is one of the videos that I would say, just on a technical level, this is an A+. This is a lot of interesting things to look at, a lot of great information, different camera shots, um, text on the screen. And then what gives it the A+, is that E.B. Stone. They're showing you how to plant tomatoes, and throughout the whole thing, they're mentioning their own product. This is a stealth commercial. This is teaching you how to plant a tomato, and they're saying, don't forget to buy E.B. Stone brand plant food. And then at the end, it also has a recap. Location, at least six hours of sunlight. A recap where, again, they're promoting their brand. So there's plenty of uh, plant food out there, but here they're mentioning they're promoting their own over and over. There's their products. These are products from today's video. Click on them to learn more, or click below in the description for So he said, click on them to learn more. Unfortunately, YouTube took away the capability to be able to click on a video to do anything. It was a really good feature that they had, but they decided other features are better, I guess, and they took that away. So now you can't click on these, nothing, yeah. nothing will happen. I'm sure some sort of company line that says that their statistics show that people don't click, which I don't believe that. So yeah, there's probably some blog that they wrote two years ago explaining why they took it away, but I don't really remember. What's the real reason? Uh, I don't know. It cut, it, it cut into their profit somehow. Yeah. You know, they want you to be. They want you to stay on YouTube as long as possible. So if they, if you make a video, if you make a link to go to your back to your website, it's going away from YouTube, and YouTube doesn't want that. YouTube wants you to be on YouTube all day long. Facebook wants you to be in Facebook all day long. Twitter wants you to be on Twitter all day long. So if they give you the ability to go elsewhere, they lost you. But I think uh, I think they're at such a big level they didn't they don't need to do that. People are on YouTube all day long, even if someone leaves for a moment. 
but at least they still left the ability that within the description those are still active links so when we actually cr uh, upload the video and such I'll show you how that works but within your description that's where you can still add links and this has got 65,000 views that does not mean 65,000 sales remember I said 1% uh, if you take the um, the doctrine of the 1%, if you've got 65,143 views and you look at 1% of that, that's, that's 651 uh, more realistically could be a real result. A sale or clicking on view your website or contacting you. So the more views and followers you have, the more possibility of a real result. No, really, nowadays, smartphones are so good, uh, you can do something like this. So uh, it's, it's really nowadays not about the, the tools, it's about the idea. Okay. So just about any kind of smartphone can record HD quality. Uh -huh. You then need the video software to put it together, and the idea, and the music. Trying to figure out how they got the uh, audio it's so good. It was like it's synchronized. It wasn't done with two smartphones because they, they would have to be synchronized for everything. But it would, and there's no like lapel microphone. There's exactly. There's no, uh, I don't see a lapel microphone. Another kind of microphone is known as a shotgun microphone, which is a microphone that looks like a long tube. And on one of those, it can be. Uh, it can be mounted on a smartphone or like another kind of camera and it's a microphone that points directly to the person and it captures the sound a lot better. You can get those for like 70 to 170 dollars and you attach it and that's like grabbing the audio a lot better because it's sort of like a cone. Or maybe off, off to the side we can't see it, maybe someone is holding a better microphone right outside of the frame that is not being recorded and they're capturing the audio that way. Yes. Uh, so there's obviously videos to increase your 1%. You have 65,000 views and you get like three sales. Mm -hmm. Just like you critique that video. Mm -hmm. So that seems like something you would want to do uh, to maximize your, your video for views or you know, sales. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't quite get the question. What, what was the well, question? Well, you're part? saying I'm. You have 65,000 views, but that doesn't mean you're getting a lot of sales off it. Possibly, so How to yes. increase that percentage of your business? How to Through increase? making a better video, just like you critique the video, I give this video an A+. Plus. Oh, uh, well... Because you're trying to get more business out of the video. Well, that's the rub of the whole class, about how do I get more views, more followers, and we've been talking over and over, that sometimes you don't quite know what will be the hit, what will be the viral sensation. So. A video may just not really resonate with people and there's no point in trying to fix this video to get more views. The point is trying different kinds of videos. I would try to do these different kinds of videos on my channel and then my stats in YouTube will tell me your list type of videos worked better than your how-to videos. So I would say the kind of video is going to determine your number of views but yes also the professionalism I'd like to believe that and I'd like to say that the more professional looking your video is the more views but uh, there's millions of examples of really badly shot video that gets two million views because it's a lot of also the idea what is the idea is this a video that is funny interesting useful that's a lot harder to teach that's why I give these examples and tell people, try it, make these videos, upload them, see what happens, check the stats, and then that'll guide you to make more uh, effective videos in the future. So, um, the, that kind of video, the how-to, Explain something to your customers. Let's say I um, I'm a realtor, so I can make a, a video here. Realtor. The goal of a realtor 
is uh, to buy or sell houses on behalf of someone. So I want people to hire me to sell their house or help them buy a house. Let's say for a realtor, I have a how-to video. How to apply for a loan. How to apply for an FHA loan. How to apply for a VA loan. Right, some sort of video that is explaining to potential first-time home buyers or VA buyers how to apply for the loan. This is a complicated thing. I'm not going to give away all my secrets. That's why I want them to hire me. I'm going to give them the overall idea of the general process and then maybe give it a tip. Uh, don't forget to uh, you know, co-sign this or something. I give away some of it, but not everything. That's why I want to get hired. So I'm creating a how-to video, and that way could be putting uh, you know, a camera on a tripod and recording myself. Or it could be a way that I'm holding the camera like this and I'm walking in my office. Any way you create it is fine, but the idea is what really is going to be important. So not giving away all the secrets, just enough to entice people to click on your website, or call you, or email you, hire you. Easier said than done, of course. Maybe that video was just enough for them to figure it out and they never have a need to call you. But depending how you create it and if you put it within your video here's my phone number and at the end of it and in the description and you might even say and if you watched our video and you have any questions call us and you'll get a free 20 minute consultation so you're always trying to figure out a way to get that connection that that lead which eventually can become a conversion which is a which is a result a sale or being hired next kind of video a review hey guys Brian Tong here from CNET.com and in my hands yep I have Google Blast this really has the whole tech world buzzing we want to really break down what this is now the first thing is not everyone can get a pair of these you had to be part of Google's Explore program and they cost $1,500 they don't come cheap but what this is really for is for developers uh, you know people that are trying to come up with new apps and ways to use the actual Google Glass and what you see here is this is a frame here. It's not actually a pair of glasses. It's a thin titanium and sturdy frame. And okay, so this one is, is one of the most professional ones I would show you. This is coming from a company called CNET. They've been around in the computer world uh, for, for years, uh, at least 20 years. So they're a big name in, in technology. They also you know, have a professional, uh, someone... Uh, that is comfortable in front of a camera and they have several uh, you know they've got just a lot of things uh, to work with it's a lot more professional I'll make this look good check it out all right but the first thing you have to do is first of all you can either tap the side or do a little head bob and it activates the screen you can see it turn on and I'm going to start by saying okay glass okay let's give this a shot okay glass I have a variety of options and here I'm going to say record a video you'll see my screen change and now you guys can see what I see. I have Michael and Jay here. Hey boys, say what's up, wave hi. There you go, right? Now you can also do a lot of other things with this. You can um, use them for map directions. You can actually Google items, names, people, and places. And it does require a data connection, so that means you're gonna have to have a phone tethered to this over Bluetooth or even over Wi-Fi. So my first impressions of Glass, I mean, these things are amazing. This is really the future, and we've never seen anything like this, but wearing them is, is a little socially awkward. Yo, Jay, what's up, bro? So this um, this one is a review of a particular product. Uh, this video is a little bit um, a little bit on an age. It's from 2013. Uh, did anyone remember hearing about this Google Glass? Uh, this was an uh, earlier generation of this whole like you know computer computer on your face sort of thing, and it never really took off. Uh, but other successors to it have been Oculus and um, HoloLens and all of these new things and 
spectacles and all of this. So uh, this created a, um, a, a, a new category of type of computer, one that you wear on, on your face like glasses. And uh, most likely, yes, this will be, uh, you know, 10, 20 years from now, this is maybe how we're all going to have our, our smartphones, not like, you know, a, a clunky thing like this. It's something that you can wear or have in your ear or something. Now, this one, as I said, I show this as an example of a much more professional uh, video, but still about the idea. They are reviewing a particular product. Uh, they are showing off this technology. It's got 33,000 views. The point of CNET really ultimately is readership. They want people to go to their website to read their articles, um, subscribe and all of that, and you make money. Uh, they make money off of, off of their readers, just like a newspaper makes money off of their readers, or a magazine, or a blog. They, they make money off of their readership through advertising and such. So th here they're doing a review, and there's plenty of other videos that will appear on the side here. Do you notice here, um, as the video ends, so the video is going to end, and then it's going to say autoplay coming up next. If I don't stop it, it's automatically going to go to another video related to that. So it's going to go to another <coughs> review. This time I went over here to TechCrunch. They're another big tech company. Eventually when this video ends, this is going to autoplay to go to someone else's video and someone else and someone else and someone else. So the default is YouTube videos have autoplay. So this is, this is unrelated to these kinds of videos, but let me make some notes here. Default in YouTube, autoplay. After a video ends, another video will automatically play. The problem here is, I was over at the YouTube channel, or the CNET YouTube channel, and now it took me over to the TechCrunch channel, and it's going to go somewhere else. So the problem here is that unless you have more videos on a particular topic, it's going to take people to look at more videos of someone else's channel. So if you have more videos of that topic, your videos will autoplay. If not, someone else's videos will autoplay. The, the viewer will then go wander off to someone else's video. This is another reason why you want to create YouTube videos, a variety of them, or on a regular basis. And I personally always turn it off. I don't want autoplay. I want to watch the videos that I want to watch. But since it's automatic and a, and a lot of people don't notice that and they turned it on automatically and people won't know or care or realize that's going to happen there automatically that unless you've got more of your own videos it'll go off to someone else's <coughs> video. So you want to control that by creating more videos or create a playlist of related videos to autoplay. In this class and all the classes that I do, I, I'm recording, you know, throughout the day, I'm recording two or three or four videos at, in between our breaks. So it's broken up into different videos. I group all the videos together in a playlist. So if you watch the first video, it will automatically play the next video in the sequence because they're grouped in a playlist. This is vaguely like boards in Pinterest in that all of the pins about a certain topic are grouped together. This is vaguely like um, communities in Google Plus in that they're grouped together. So in YouTube, I can put together a bunch of videos in the order that I want. And when someone starts watching the first video in the playlist, the next ones automatically play. So I keep people uh, captured in my channel looking at my videos. Let's see, the next one, lists.
first installment of the New York Perspective. And what better subject to start with than the top five New York style pizza places in the very country? So I give this as an example for two things. This is a type of a video that is a list. Top five New York style pizzerias in Charleston. Uh, top 10 whatever, top 12 whatever, bottom 6 whatever. So any amount, the number doesn't matter. But it's a kind of a video where you count down or count up something. So I give it as an example because of that kind of video. I also give it as an example as a video that I would give like a C- minus to. It's not that good of a video, technically. At the very beginning, there is their branding, which is their animation, which takes way too long. They were obviously very happy with themselves that they paid, you know, $500 for someone to make this amazing animation of their website. It's already happening for 15 seconds. And in, you know, internet time, and we don't have time nowadays, 15 seconds is way too long. Why am I staring at your logo this long? That logo should have been five seconds. Or it could be at the end. So, okay. There's their logo at the beginning that's taking way too long. Here, visually, it's fine. We see Sabatino right here, and he's uh, presenting and getting started on the, on the idea. His name is there. All of that looks great. But then what's the problem? Lighting is OK. Audio. Compared to the other videos, what did he say there? So the audio isn't that great, which I'm surprised he's got a microphone right in front of him. Either it was not plugged in, or I don't know what happened. Maybe it was a prop. Right there, again, a lot of that way, a little, a little too dark. It's way darker on the projector than on my screen. That's a nice shot right there. But then throughout the whole video, there's like way too many shots that are dark. The audio is not that great. There's a part over here where he's starting to eat the food. But the problem is, when he actually eats the food over here. Again, the audio. Can you hear that in the background? He had a microphone a minute ago. Why isn't he using it? <laughs> and he's got all of this sound in the background. Yeah, you have the ambient sound of, of a bustling pizzeria, but it's I can't I can't hear him, and it's distracting. Calzone. Now usually calzone is baked, put in the oven. This one is deep fried in oil. It tastes absolutely amazing. Cheese inside is ricotta cheese. So actually doing the job of like the reviewing and all that, it's good, but unfortunately. Uh, the video itself has, has these problems of, of audio and, and visuals. And here's the one secret um, to making a great video. Make sure it looks good and sounds good. <laughs> Obvious. So if you're going to have something that is going to be inherently audio-visual, make sure that your audio and visuals are good, or at least a little bit better than here. This, mon this montage here is good you know different shots he's not talking the music is playing good music that fits the style different shots kind of a weird empty screen there but then okay shots of people this part's okay but his own voice yeah, and visuals not that great so a fade from one to another shot. Those are good. Those are good transitions from one shot to another. Instead of just a quick cut, it's a little fade from one shot to another. That's good. Um, then let's see when he sits down to review. Now, similar to what we uh, showed you before at Vincent's, where it's uh, a cal like a calzone, but this is a fade. And I'm going to show you the inside of this Stromboli. So on the projector, it looks even more, way more red on my screen, not so bad. But here the problem is, uh, okay, now you have to deal with color calibration in the video. Uh, the video under these kinds of lights makes it look very red, and that's not that nice. His skin, he looks very sunburned. 
uh, and on other shots the color looks normal. So there was a very challenging shoot there because some of it is shot outside of the building, nice bright daylight, but then some of it inside where it's darker, then it's louder, and then there's echo and all of these problems, but some of these shots here of fading in and focus and all that, this is nice. This is nice showing the people there, but there's just a lot of things. Well, maybe looking at it again, I'll raise the grade. Maybe a C plus, not a C minus. But um, this is a kind of video there, um, top top X, top two, top five, top twenty, whatever. And um, it's got 2,600 views. Uh, this is from Ricker Photography. It's like part of their demo reel. They're showing here's what we can do. We made this video for. Uh, this channel and you know hire us and we'll make you a great video like this too. Yes. How much, I mean, on average, what would it cost for you to hire someone to do that? It's such a huge range, but you know, it would not be uncommon for this to be like 300 to 500 dollars yeah. for this video because even this result where I'm tearing it apart, it was a lot of effort. And even if you just do it like on a, on a, um, you know hourly rate and such any of this video stuff is going to cost you know sixty five dollars an hour seventy five a hundred dollars an hour uh, not, not, nothing you know twenty dollars an hour anything like that because the setup there's at least one camera being used and the camera probably is a couple hundred dollars at least there is the person presenting there is then all of that production that all of that post-production meaning they took it into the video editor they cut it all together they put the music and the voice and everything so this is a time-consuming thing even though even though you know there are things to nitpick it's a nine minute long video it must have taken several hours at least simply to record and then as much of that time to put together in the video editor and then it, it can take that much so you know the cheapest, you know, two hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. I would not be surprised, and uh, it's just a huge range. Yes. Um, remember the links of the videos? Mm -hmm. So I found it. So we had a starting in September twenty-seven this year. Mm. If we're linking to approve the external websites, you need to join. Okay, so they've changed it in that it used to be you can add links right on your video directly. Now you have to be part of the partnership program. Okay, uh, I need to look into that yeah, to get. Okay, interesting. I wonder why on EB Stone it didn't have their link then. That's odd. So yeah, these these networks, you know, we're in their playground. We follow their rules, and if they change things up, we've got to jump through their hoops. So that's interesting to know. But it all, didn't it also say something about approved? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So it looks like you have to go through some sort of approval process to also have that link. You can't link it anywhere you want. So I guess if we, if we see their rules and if it's not too obtrusive, it might be a good idea to go through that whole process to add those. But he, he also very easily is to be able to add links in your description, and that really isn't any sort of problem. Although it is nice to say, OK, and click here to do that on the video. But at the very least, we have it in the description. So I also show this as an example about, OK, it's got lots of views. It, it seems to be like their, their demo reel. Look at what we can do, hire us. But then here's also the example of be careful because eight thumbs up, four thumbs down. So it's, um, it's in that you know people have an opinion on pizza. And enough people have said, you're wrong about your five choices. So just keep in mind that there is positive and negative reactions on these videos. By default, anyone can thumbs up or thumbs down or comment on your video. The great thing about the internet is that it can be anonymous and people can say anything. The bad thing about the internet is that it's anonymous and anyone can say anything. So the positivity, of course, is that uh, you know you are free to put out your opinion and if you're positive and all of that, great. But then the downside is there's many people because they're anonymous and they don't have the repercussions of real life are very mean or off topic or or bad online. So. 
they've got this number of views and they've got some thumbs up but they've got some thumbs down because again everyone's got an opinion on pizza and the default is that anyone can write a comment and someone can go in and says you guys are stupid how could you choose that place <laughs> well I don't want that negativity on my on my channel we will see that when we set it up after the break we can control this just like on Facebook I had said that Twitter is one of the most open networks of all which your message could get away from you you could have a lot of negativity come your way because it's so open Facebook is very can be very controlled for good and for bad and so can YouTube you can set it up so that no one can thumbs down my video also no one can thumbs up it you can set it up okay no one can comment or you can set it up uh, I will approve comments so when we set it up I will recommend yes let's set it up in the way that it is not so completely open for you to keep your message on track and again because it is your message your video your property you can do that you're not infringing on anyone's rights or anything like that in censorship and anything like that if I don't want people to say bad things about my video it's my video just like if I don't want people to yell at me on my front porch I tell them to get off my property in public on the sidewalk great yell at me and then I'll call the police but on my front porch you're on my property get off my property so on YouTube and all of these channels that I have that power get off my property make your own video and trash me but on my own videos I'm gonna keep it positive because positivity breeds positivity and negativity breeds negativity So if you've got a lot of negative comments people will just pile on but if you keep it positive more positive comments also come about there is something to say about you know there is uh, what's the saying there is no bad publicity so yeah you've got a lot of negative comments and you've got a lot of thumbs down and then maybe that's giving you the attention about let me try that pizza myself a lot of people said that pizza was terrible let me try it myself and maybe you get a result but I would rather focus on the positive stuff and the positive uh, the positive uh, publicity than the negative So this is going to auto-play and go off to other people. Best of New York Pizza. And we visit a Charleston restaurant that once served George Washington. Pizza tour of New York City. Best pizza in NYC. The secrets to why East Coast pizza rules. <laughs> Top 10, our favorite, char restaurants in Charleston. So here's another one. This is another Charleston-based company, and they're saying their top 10. Let's check this one out briefly. This segment will cover our favorite 10 restaurants in the Charleston area. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. We're going to start with our absolute favorite restaurant, Melvin's. For those of you that are barbecue fanatics like us, it's hard to top South Carolina. <laughs> for the whole video, for the whole video, they're just there sitting on the couch talking. But it's got 5,000 views. But it's got six thumbs down. So it's got more thumbs down than the other one more thumbs up than the other one more views <laughs> it's got a better ratio <clears throat> now again this is you, you never know the other video is way better technically even with all its flaws the other video is way better this is just two people on a couch at least uh, you know their, their, their house isn't messy but maybe they maybe they've got a lot of great jokes you know I have it on mute but maybe they're making great jokes and they have great banter but visually it's very boring video but maybe because again popularity breeds popularity maybe on their channel okay they've got 997 subscribers on the other one okay 18 subscribers so even with only 18 subscribers to get 2,000 views that ratio is a lot better as opposed to the the couple right there that's got nearly a thousand subscribers and only 5,000 views so there's just such a disparity about there's like a huge chasm about some channels that get so many views and popularity and some channels that are so under the radar. What does it mean subscribers? Well subscribers is like I said earlier, this is the number of followers. The followers. They have nine hundred and ninety seven followers, whereas the other one had eighteen. Yes. Uh, do you recommend like Rarely subscribe to, like, oh, I really gotta follow this company. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. Authentic. It all comes back to um, the persona that you're trying to portray in the business. If I'm a tax preparer, I want to be rather professional because I'm going to deal with people's money. So I wouldn't probably be doing this kind of video where me and my wife are on the couch talking about your taxes. I want it a little more professional. For food reviews, for food reviews and such, I could be a little more casual. So the, the answer is yes and no. Yes, you want to be uh, casual if your business dictates it. No, you don't want to be casual if your business doesn't dictate it. So the other one where it was a little more professional and he's got the microphone and a little bit more visual interest, that might be working for that type of business. And here, maybe their whole persona of Fuzzy's Kitchen, that channel, is this, that they're just talking, shooting the breeze, casual. So it really depends what your product is, who your, who your audience is, and the kind of voice you're trying to put out there. And then that's still the big variable is the viewer. I'm trying to, in my professional business, to have a professional looking channel, but then my viewers don't care. Maybe my message or my product, people don't care. So then, okay, I wanna try a casual message from my professional business, and that's a hit. But then I start to get clientele that are also not professional. So you, you, don't, you don't quite know. It, it is somewhat of dress, what is the saying? Dress for the, dress for the job you want. So if I'm gonna dress with a nice suit, I want a job that where I, I am professional. If I'm dressed in flip-flops and casual, well, I'm trying to get a job that is more casual. Create a channel and create a voice for that audience that you're looking for and for what you're trying to portray. So the great thing is that there's no wrong answer and the great thing is that the YouTube channel is free and the great thing is you can upload as many videos as you want and the great thing is that you can experiment with however you want with any of this. That's why I'm giving these different examples and I really recommend for people to try these different types, see if they work for people and when we log in we'll see we have stats to look at and it will tell you these videos did better than this one and you figure out oh that's because this one looked like this and sounded like this and this one was about that. Like if, if you're trying, you're, you know, you try six of these as kind of a beta test, and you said, oh, I don't really, that one didn't turn out. I really don't want to upload it you know, for viewing. Is there a way just to get rid of it? Yeah, definitely. Anything that you upload, any videos that you upload, you can delete them. Okay. You can tweak them to some degree. You can change the title, you can change the description and the thumbnail. You can't change the video itself, but you can change some of that metadata that's very important that we'll talk about. You can hide it so no one can see it. You can keep it there, but hide it. You can make it private, you can make it public, or you can delete it. So this is as opposed to, you know, like Twitter. The only thing you can do on Twitter is delete your tweet. You can't go back to edit it. Here you can edit some aspects of the video or delete it. So yes, for testing and beta testing and all of that, you can delete this stuff and then bring it back later. So I just did a quick search for a topic and there's a bunch of reviews. So, I mean a bunch of results. So um, some of them look professional, some of them not, but then there's different views and thumbs up and everything. last one here then we'll take a break uh, advertisement this is the easiest one it's a commercial it's an ad and I already showed one but let me show it one more time to make you hungry again <laughs> So that one was made with iMovie, and it um, has the music and the different shots. Again, visually, uh, for some people, the style of it, they wouldn't like it. Why is the camera moving around so much? Why is it out of focus? That's, you know, again, just aesthetic choice and, and, and people's style uh, and what they like. You, you know, everyone's a critic. 
so that's fine. This is the style that was for that particular video in that particular channel. Uh, we made that video for them. It didn't get that many views, 218 comparatively, one thumbs up, and there's only eight subscribers. But you know, this particular client, they wanted to try, they wanted to dip their toe in this, and then they wanted to use their money for something else, and that was fine. So it's, it's just there. If then this one ends autoplay, it goes off to another one of their videos, and that's going to go off to another one of their videos. But look at that one. That's the one that for this client, that's the one that went viral, 2,000 views. And this is exactly what I'm saying about these two videos right here are the ones that took the most effort. Then the one that didn't take any effort really is the one that got all the views. Let's see this one. You know better than me, preparation of good food is done with the fresh ingredients, simplicity in preparation of food, which makes the difference. And as my mama used to say, canta in a cucina, which means sing while you're doing that and be happy and so he the chef is uh, putting together the dish you know this is one of the first videos we did for clients a while ago and you know I would I'd be very generous and give this a D plus <laughs> because uh, the, the video is you know the lighting is terrible the audio is terrible um, the product itself you know maybe it doesn't really look that great compared to the videos that I showed a moment ago. Uh, I would uh, grade that other video a lot better, of course. This one, but then this is the one that's got 2,000 views, most likely because this is a very unique dish. This is uh, risotto nero. So risotto, you've heard of risotto, right? It's that rice dish. Well, this is squid ink infused risotto. So that's why it looks black. This is very unique. You don't see this very much. So people are interested. What is this dish? That's the one that got more of the hits than the other one. And um, there's, there you never know what's going to be what's going to be the hit. Again, all of that just noise in the background of the kitchen. And then it goes off to someone else's risotto nero um, videos, but the the clients' videos you saw that they were in the in the queue first. So the more of your own videos you create related, the more your videos will auto play before it goes to someone else. If a person turns off auto play, you don't worry about it, but that's on by default. So the more of your own videos you create, the more you keep people on your channel. When we take our when we come back from our break uh, I'll explain a little bit more theoretically YouTube then we will create the channel and one of the things I'll explain is, is about profiting off of your channel so it's 1107 we'll take a 10 minute break and then we'll be back I have a good question um, so you can